Hi there, I'm Ian. I'm from LearnPracticalGist.com. This is another in my What is GIS series. And what I want to talk to you today uh, about today is mapping disease. Now, I'm continuing with this theme that with any uh, or with so many computerised systems that their origins lie in a paper-based system. So I want to give you an example of, the sort, of a sort of a project that you might undertake in the GIS now um, that was undertaken in the mid-1800s using uh, just a paper-based paper mapping. Now the example I want to give is an example um, the example of Dr. John Snow. It's a, it's, uh, the problem is that there was a cholera outbreak in uh, the Soho district in London in the mid-1800s. Now, there was over 500 people died in a 10-day in a period um, in this outbreak, so it was a pretty serious outbreak and it was confined to a fairly small area. The story goes that, um, that John Snow... Uh, uh, um, a fellow who saw a link between uh, water quality and community health uh, went about mapping where people had died and related it to a particular to one particular water pump, the Broad Street pump. He convinced local officials to um, to take the handle off the pump, and following that, the cholera outbreak uh, subsided over the next few days. But it's, it's actually not quite that simple. And what I want to do is I want to take you through the mapping exercise that he undertook. Because once again, it is the sort of mapping exercise that you would undertake in the geographical information system even now. But the point I really want to make about it is that um, there are anomalies in the mapping that John Snow made the effort to find out about and explain, which made his mapping case even stronger than what it otherwise would have been. So let's have a quick look at the area, that, at the, uh, the mapping that he did. What we see on the left here in the area that's outlined in red that I'm running the mouse around is the number of deaths that occurred. So you can see it's a pretty, pretty nasty um, um, outbreak of cholera. Now cholera is just it's this disease, it's so nasty. People would leave for work in the morning and be and not make it home for dinner at night is, is how uh, quickly it would hit people. Uh, and this is the area here that he mapped. So basically what he did is he went to the morgue, he found out where people uh, lived that had died, and he just put a little mark on the map where they lived. But we can see, what we'll see here is there's this red area here that is the pump that he expected, he suspected, sorry, of being the pump that was infecting people, the, the well that was infecting people. But there was all these outliers over here, for example. And, you know, why was there... Why over here are there, um, are there so many incidences where, when it's so close to this map down here, to this pump down here? So he went around about explaining, trying to explain these outliers. So the first thing he did was he looked at this pump here. He interviewed people surrounding this pump here. And what he found out is that the reason they weren't, that is that they weren't actually using that pump because the water quality there was so poor. They were actually walking to the Broad Street pump and using the water from this well here. So that explained why there were um, so many deaths up here. Whoops. up here, so close to this pump. Next, he thought, well, gee, there's 500 odd people working there. Why, at the, at the workhouse, why is it just so, why are there so few deaths there? And when he went and, exa and, and uh, interviewed people, what he discovered is that they were actually getting water from their own bore. They weren't using the Broad Street pump. The brewery had 70 odd people working there and only a small number of deaths compared to the surrounds. Why? 
Well, firstly, they had their own pump. And secondly, um, all staff had access to free beer. Now, that's, uh, that sounds like a really good place to work. But uh, another point I'd like to make, as someone um, who likes to brew their own beer occasionally, is that beer had a very significant role in, um, in society in those days. Because it was brewed, it was a guarantee, it was a certain guarantee that the water quality um, would be far better than um, what you might get out of a well. So it was a safer fluid to drink. So down here, why are there so why up here are there so many incidences of cholera when it seems so close to this well here? Well, the issue is if you look closely, this well here is in a in a dead end, and so it was actually easier for these people to get water from the Broad Street pump than what it was for them to get water from this uh, pump that seems much closer. Now that's a really geographical problem, um, that one of accessibility. And accessibility is a problem, a geographical problem that you'll come across quite often uh, if, if you uh, pursue any career in uh, GIS. And then he asked, well, how come there are relatively so few deaths in this Poland Street area? It's so close to this pump. Why are there so few deaths? And what he discovered is that basically, as soon as the, um, uh, the outbreak occurred, this area was pretty much evacuated uh, within a day or two. So there wasn't people around um, to get infected. OK, so the point I've been trying to make here is that uh, with any geographical problem, you can under or so many geographical problems you can undertake uh, in a paper-based system, or um, or you can undertake it in a geographical information system. But the really big point is that it is just so so important if you're to make any sort of geographical case. It's so important to understand the problem that you're mapping. Now, because this guy, John Snow, had been around and done his homework and could explain away why all these, um, why, why there were greater incidences of cholera so close to different wells and why there were, um, um, and, and, and in other places, why there were fewer incidences of cholera. Because he could explain that geographically, the case that he took to council, to, to the local council, to remove the pump handle that was actually removed on the uh, 8th of September uh, was so much stronger than it otherwise would have been. Now, we can see that when he removed the pump handle that the outbreak, that the cholera, of outbra cholera outbreak uh, subsided fairly quickly. Um, so, that's that uh, John Snow exercise. I really have to thank the UCLA Department of Epidemiology for their brilliant site um, that's dedicated to Dr. John Snow. He was just this amazing character. He is the father of epidemiology. And I really encourage you to have a look um, at this site because there's other mapping that he did um, that is really, really worthwhile looking at. So you've been listening to me, I'm Ian Allen, I'm from learnpracticalgist.com and I hope to see you in other videos. Bye for now.